What is going on, everybody? This is Gabriel Jones giving you a drop of sun any chance I get. And today, we're going to be reacting to the debut album of Tate McRae titled, I Used to Think I Could Fly. Tate McRae is a brand new ballpark for me. She appears to have gotten her start on So You Think You Can Dance, where she was able to show off her ballet skills. For many viewers, her presence on the show was very significant because she was probably the first Canadian to ever appear on it, and she was able to finish in third place in the overall competition. After the season finished, Tate caught the attention of RCA Records, after her own original song, One Day, became a viral sensation. Ever since, she's been producing records with them. Her first two EPs, All the Things I Never Said and Too Young to Be Sad, are pretty dreary in sound and don't do anything for me, although Rubber Band is a personal highlight. I guess for a while, my biggest issue with Tate McRae is that I want her to find her own distinct identity as a performer. That's not to say that she possesses zero talent, but I want to be able to pick her out from an entire crowd full of pop stars. With her new single released back in February called She's All I Want to Be, it'll be fascinating to see what direction she takes her career in. And now we have a fresh new album, so let's see what we got in store. Before we start, I want to advise everyone to leave a like and comment for this video because all the engagement this video receives will help YouTube recommend it to more people and boost it in the algorithm. So I really, really appreciate if you guys engage with it. And now, time to get into I Used to Think I Could Fly. Track number one, question mark. Okay, we got some radio sounds. Okay, so that was a very fast track. <laughs> it seems to be like a short interlude that sort of sets up the theme of the record. You know, you got a lot of radio sounds, you know, TV static and all that. It seems to be like Tate discussing her fear and, you know, anxiety of like getting older and growing up. Hell, they literally utter the title like within like the first 18 seconds. For an opener, I think it's alright, but you know, don't really have much to discuss. Track number two, Don't Come Back. Okay, acoustic sounds, bringing us in. Oh, we got, we got a serious breakup going on now. Oh, I'm not sure about this bass, or this beat. He's been spending too much time with Jimmy Fox. <laughs> Okay, I like that vocal melody right there that's on the bridge. Kind of hits my ears right. Okay, so that was Don't Come Back, and yeah, I think that one is pretty decent. Some of the melodies on that, I think, you know, kind of like, you know, got me grooving a little bit. Uh, creatively, I don't think that the beat was very fitting for this track. I think it was a little too heavy. It was too reliant on that beat. Maybe make it less vibrating or something. Yeah, I don't know if, like, it kind of fit with the tune. The acoustic guitar I thought was pretty nice. It did a nice job at like uh, carrying the track a little. Lyrically, it's pretty straightforward. Tate is very pissed at her boyfriend for being so, you know, unloyal to her. And now she is just so fed up with his garbage that, you know, she doesn't even care if she's being dishonest because she knows that the relationship is going south and she knows that they're gonna break apart eventually. And she knows in her heart of hearts that he is going to miss her deeply, but he completely screwed up his chance with her. The resentment here is pretty fascinating, and you can tell that Tate has, you know, deep feelings about this relationship, and, you know, that there's probably a lot of pain going on there, so I think, you know, it's passable. Track number three, I'm So Gone. Okay, the opening has an acoustic guitar again. Okay. Oh, we got some, we got some more breakups, I believe. Okay, the trap beat is coming right in. <laughs> oh, jeez. Yeah, a little embarrassing. Okay, so. She's pissed off. <laughs> Oh, I think he might be after your money, Tate. <laughs> okay, so that was I'm So Gone, and you know, it had some nice elements going on with it. The guitar actually sounded very nice. Like, I kind of like how it's very, like, baritone in its structure, and it really, like, plays into the downbeat mood of the entire tune. Again, I don't think I'm a fan of this trap beat. Like, I don't know 
uh, if she should be so reliant on it. I think like if she just had like a regular drum set with her, then I think the track would be improved greatly. But it seems we have another song where Tate is pissed off at her boyfriend because you know she's you know just so fed up with him. Like he seems to be trying to get back with her now that she's like a huge star and is like a top forty hit maker, and she's just not having it. She knows that she that he's just you know, BSing her. Or it could be about a friend who just has some nasty habits going on with them and Tate is just like, no, I mean, our our companionship has sort of fallen apart and I want nothing to do with you anymore. Again, I think it's a pretty okay track. It's not like surprising in any sort of way, but you know, it's, you know, it's fine, you know? <laughs> track number four, what would you do? Ooh, this guitar strumming is very intense. Ominous in a way. Huh. I can't shake the feeling she's singing about a specific singer. <laughs> I don't want to ever hear you speak that word again. Ooh, falsettoing a little. Oh, an electric guitar melody. Let's go. Very, it's very silent right now for guitar plucking. I like that rhyme actually. <laughs> That's a great rhyme. Oh, I think it's kind of like, what would you do if I inflicted the pain onto you? You know, you probably wouldn't like it. <laughs> those chanting sounds right there. Okay, so that was What Would You Do? And yeah, I think I actually really did that record a lot. It's definitely not as melancholic as some of her other tracks on this record, and it has a lot of energy, and it has a lot of bite to it. Like, it makes you wanna like, you know, really get hyped up. A lot of the guitar plucking I really enjoy on this, and the electric guitar melodies are beautiful. I, I really like how they sound on the chorus. You can definitely sense a lot of Tate McRae's anger in this song, and you know, just how bitter she is at her boyfriend and how like badly he screwed up. I think my favorite section of this song is the bridge where she lays out all the specific details on how badly their relationship derailed. He never showed up to her birthday party and at one point he was even caught kissing one of her friends like bro what the hell is wrong with you? And he probably blamed it on the alcohol just like he did in all these other tracks. One thing I will have to say is that it's pretty obvious that she might be trying to like play into the same lane as Good For You by Olivia Rodrigo. I wouldn't say that the lyrical substance is exactly identical, but it's pretty obvious that it's supposed to be like another pop punk song where she sings about all of her resentment she has towards her ex and how badly everything went and how she just feels kind of hurt by the way he acted. Again, I'm not saying that they're like indistinguishable from each other, but it does seem like she is trying to like, you know, take inspiration from that song a little, which is not a bad thing by any means. In fact, I would say it's more of a compliment. I want more songs like Good For You, like who wouldn't? But overall, I think this is a pretty solid tune. Track number five, Chaotic. Ooh, piano ballads, I like them. Somehow I feel like she's singing this to her parents because like they know her so well. Yeah, breaking into adulthood can be like one pain in the butt. <laughs> Ooh. Mmm, that's a cello. That's a cello. A nice touch. Nah, I don't think you are. Like, it's perfectly normal, you know? It's just a part of, you know, getting older. I mean, yeah, you could tell that you're gonna move past all this eventually, but, you know, for now, it's just a total mess. Alright, so, that was chaotic, and yeah, I actually think I like that one quite a bit. She relies more on a piano ballad with some violins tossed in, or, you know, some string sections tossed in and she just makes this like a stripped down type, you know, anthem for herself. And it's her just singing about the pains of, you know, getting older and growing, you know, someone could tell you a thing or two about how that feels. But yeah, you can really sense that this has been weighing on her brain so much. And once again, she's sort of reflecting on her relationship with this past lover or, you know, past partner. And even though she had some major difficulties with them, she somehow feels like 
she could maybe use their company again. But maybe she senses that it may not be the best option to take since, you know, it was kind of a personal help for her. But overall, it's really interesting to see just how much confusion and, and exhaustion and, you know, fear that comes with getting older and she is starting to really experience that for the first time you know she like is an 18 year old girl and she has so many other responsibilities to take on now so yeah i can i can understand how that would be a lot for her <laughs> i think she really wrote this from a place of sincerity like it means so much to her and i really do think that this song is kind of a highlight for this record so far track number six hate myself Yeah, because, like, you know, closeness can be a little bit of a scare sometimes. When you said that you just couldn't take it, and I was losing my Yeah, I, I just wasn't, like, examining myself. I wasn't doing self-reflection. Mm, the drums paired with the echoing piano is a very, very cool sound. Hmm. Kind of like those yelling backing vocals, you know, which really capture the anger and frustration that she's feeling. Now we take a cool piano. He's just sitting with us. Okay, so that was Hate Myself. And once again, we have another slow tempo ballad on our hands. This seems to be a song where Tate, I believe, is singing to a friend where she is expressing how much grievance that she has at her own self for sort of pushing them away. She has so many insecurities that she wants to work on and there were moments where she got so caught up in her own thoughts that she wasn't thinking about how they were affecting the other person. And as a result, they kind of became distant from each other. This seems to be another instance where Tate is really reflecting on how she's maturing and that now she's becoming an adult. She needs to think about her own you know, emotions and feelings and how that they can be projected easily onto other people and negatively impact them. If I were her, I wouldn't be too hard on her herself. You know, everyone has those days where they're not their best self and, you know, sometimes we have nasty habits that we need to work on. I appreciate Tate wanting to do some introspective, you know, reevaluation on herself. Uh, but I think she will find a way out of uh, all the turmoil. And, you know, I appreciate uh, what she's got going on here. Track number seven, What's Your Problem? Okay, a drowned out guitar going on. Oh, damn. This sounds like a really bad dude. <laughs> you may be dependent on you, you son of a bitch. Okay, another trap beat. Not the biggest fan of that. Yeah, you had this, like, weird hero complex in you. It's just so, so toxic. Yeah, you touted me like I was some sort of trophy. Like, and I don't want to be treated like a trophy. I'm a human being. Woo! That vocal melody right there that she sings, you know? Kind of, you know, got me dancing a little. She seems to be singing about this boyfriend that, you know, just treated her like absolute garbage, like total shit. He made her dependent on him and he was like parading her like some kind of trophy girlfriend. At one point he was like smiling when she was crying and I have no idea what the context behind that was. But yeah, it sounds like she was not faring well with this dude and he was just a straight up, you know, piece of garbage. And thankfully she's now away from him. <laughs> Instrumentally, I don't think I really dug it that much. Like, the Drowned Out guitars were pretty bland, and uh, you know how I feel about her using the trap beat. I just don't think it fits well with her tunes. Um, yeah, it's it's like a it's like a math kind of song for me. Track number eight, She's All I Wanna Be. This song I actually did a short reaction to a few months back. You can check the video out right now. It's in the description. But, you know, I always like to listen to the song in the context of the album. Okay, the electric guitar, you know, kind of like it a bit. She wants to live the fancy life, the high life, you'd say. <laughs> yeah, there's not a lot of confidence there, really. And I really just like this, like, you know, pop 
rock type of sound, you know, that really just fits well with her vocals. Mmm, I kind of like how they like ascend in a way, the vocals and the guitars together. I also want to talk about the drumming and how distinct it is. It's very well mixed and you know, it just fits with the sound. The envy on this song is just so real. <laughs> The blending of the vocals right there, I kind of like them. Okay, so that was She's All I Wanna Be, and you know, I think it sounds pretty nice. Yeah, and in fact, I think it might be my favorite song in this album right now. It has a lot of energy to it, it has some really cool subject matter going on with it. I've said everything I wanted to say in my short reaction, so I don't have that many thoughts this time around. Again, check out the video if you really want to see more of me talking about this song, but yeah, I think I've, you know, said my piece on it. Track number nine, Boy X. Okay, slow plucking guitar. Mmm, the gaze was just enough to sell me. <laughs> just promise me you won't, like, do something to hurt this girl. Like, just, please, just, I'm begging you. Woo! All settled, baby, let's go. The heart was just crumbling up and just losing life. Mm -hmm. I could tell that you were singing about yourself. Yeah, it's like, you know, you have, you're vulnerable just like everyone else is. Okay, so that was Boy X, and yeah, I think that one, you know, has some interesting lyrical content to it. She's singing about this guy who really just shattered her heart, and that she thought was very promising. And she's begging him to not fuck up this brand new relationship she has with another girl, like he did with her, you know, and she just really wants him to, like, go through that promise. But honestly, I kind of like that one line that she ends the track with, how she says, there's a billion boy exes, but there's only one of me. It's kind of like her saying that, you know, she sees herself as a valuable enough person that she wants to really commit to someone who she thinks really deserves it. Like, if you want to date me, you got to be a very special fucking dude. And I appreciate her for saying that. Instrumentally, there's nothing too interesting going on with it. It's a typical guitar ballad with a few neat little pr production tricks here and there. Um, so yeah, I think it's a pretty all right song. Track number nine, You're So Cool. Okay, there's a little bit of attitude with this guitar riff. So you talked to the exes and you still went out with this dude? I don't know if that was a smart choice. Okay, this trap beat in this song, I actually kind of vibe with a little. The tambourine sounds, I think, are nice sounding. Ooh, and that little shredding effect. Damn. Yeah, this chorus is actually kind of groovy. I kind of like the structure of it. Nice little uh, composition here. Okay, so that was You're So Cool, and yeah, I think I like that one quite a bit. It has a nice tempo to it, it has like a lot of attitude going on with it. The trap beat I actually think fits with this kind of tune because, you know, it's her like being all hip and everything, like showing off some swagger, presenting herself as a really kind of hip girl, if you know what I mean. And I sort of like how there's this irony at play where she's talking about how incredibly cool this guy is, but that can be seen as a negative. She was played by this douchebag, and all the exes warned her, but she went on with it anyway, thinking that, you know, it wouldn't lead to anything too disastrous, but it did. And now she's in the process of shaking this guy off, even though it took her like a week or so, she's, you know, completely over him. I actually really liked that one. It's a fun one, and I can't wait to return to it. Track number 11, Feel Like Shit. Okay, some pianos going on here. Like some mezzo forte. Pianos, emotion. The heartbreak, it was just too much. You know, it overwhelmed me. And uh, I don't know if I have much to say about this one. It's another breakup ballad where she's talking about how terrible she feels after the breakup and how she seems to, like, still be stuck in the healing process. And I don't know if there's, like, any real lyrics that actually jump out to me. And, 
Yeah, I don't know if I'll remember this one too much. Like, uh, the production, you know, it has some nice pianos going on with it, but other than that, I don't have much to comment on, so... Yeah, not really doing much for me. Track number 12, Go Away. Album title right there. Hmm, you know, you're expecting some, like spectacle of some kind, you know? Like, what do you want from You know, fun in air quotes right there. Ooh. That thumping right there, I kind of like it. Kind of like the falsetto right there. She's really good at hitting those notes. Again, it's like her talking about her fear of loneliness, which she's talked a lot about in this record. Yeah, I hope you're happy about how much I haven't gotten over you. <laughs> okay, so that was Go Away, and yeah, I think there's a, a little bit of substance going on there. Tate has officially broken up with this guy who she really felt a strong connection with and she kind of fears that she's gonna be forgotten by him because, you know, she really was into this type of person. She can never get him off her mind, and she's just seeing him in everyone, and the thought of him is just haunting her in a way. There is sort of a haunting atmosphere going on with this track, you know, tonally, and you can really sense it in the way she sings too. Like, there's a lot of heartbreak in her voice, you know, especially when she hits those falsettos. Instrumentally, I don't really have much to comment on, so I think we could just move on. But maybe I will have a comment for the instruments, because Phineas O'Connell is a producer on the finale track, so let's take a look at that. Track number 13, I Still Say Goodnight. Hmm. A slow piano ballad. This kind of reminds me of, uh, The Scientist in a lot of ways. Yeah, because I, I officially said goodbye for good, honey. <laughs> yeah, this is definitely a Phineas track. There's a lot of spaciousness going on with the pianos and the atmosphere. <laughs> yeah, like, you're not very discreet when it comes to being honest, buddy. <laughs> Okay, we got a sweeping violin section creeping in. Okay, so that was I Still Say Goodnight, and she is definitely singing about another breakup. And here she seems to be very disappointed that their relationship, you know, wasn't ever that close, but, you know, she had a little bit of hope that he had strong feelings for her, but that was provably false when he no longer said goodnight to her, you know, I guess whenever they would, like, you know, go out on a date with each other and you know when he would drop her off at her home and you know that would be like the end of the night and he would say good night but not anymore she still has a bit of empathy left even if he doesn't and you know i kind of like how she's displaying that this one is just a simple piano ballad provided to us by phineas and i really like his work here you know he never disappoints when it comes to piano ballads yeah and honestly yeah i think it's a pretty decent track you know not not much to say about it but i think it's serviceable and with that i'm gonna take a break i'm gonna come back later give you my final thoughts once i revisited the album so bear with me Uh, Alright, I am back and I'm ready to give you my final thoughts on Tate McRae's I Used to Think I Could Fly. A part of me feels dirty for how I'm commenting on this album, because Tate is a very young star, and with someone who's just 18, you want to be as charitable as possible since they're still navigating their way through showbiz. That's not to say that I hate the record by any means, no, like, I don't despise this at all. One aspect that's worth highlighting is her singing. Oh, damn, can this girl sing. <laughs> I find her vocals very similar to Camila Cabello since they sort of have that nasal sound. She knows how to belt and capture the emotion when her voice elevates. There are moments in the record where the sound works against Tate. Like, I cannot emphasize this more. The trap beat needs to go. <laughs> 
The trap beat just distracts from the other instrumentals, and at times it doesn't even fit with the dramatic tone like on Don't Come Back and I'm So Gone. Some of the drowned out guitars I also don't vibe with either, like I think she could do without those. I think when the music really works for me is when she's constructing ballads, where she's reliant on the acoustic guitars and the echoing pianos. I also gotta admire the pop rock sound where she's really intensifying her emotions and just laying out all the anger. I feel like out of all these tunes, those ones have the best chance at charting very high. Lyrically, the songs are pretty straightforward, where she's reflecting on her breakups and how shamefully certain boys treated her. I think it would have been nice to hear her sing more about struggles of entering adulthood that don't relate to romance, which I think Alessia Carr did a better job at with The Pains of Growing. I do think Tay can sell Heartbreak very well, but I think I was just expecting more variety from her this time. It's very hard not to bring up Olivia Rodrigo and Billie Eilish when having conversations about Tay McRae. While she doesn't have Billie's dark eloquence or Olivia's tidal wave of sentiment, I still think she's bringing something special to the table. I said at the beginning that I really wanted to see Tate stand out from the library of pop stars and establish her own musical identity. And now that I've gone through her debut, I'll say that she still has ways to go, but I think she's actually getting somewhere. She's proven her talent, and I'm actually pretty eager to see what she's gonna do next. I give I Used to Think I Could Fly a 6 out of 10. My favorite tracks would have to be Chaotic, She's All I Want to Be, and What Would You Do? My least favorites would have to be What's Your Problem, Question Mark, and I'm So Gone. And I think that just about does it. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I appreciate you sticking around. If you want to follow me on social media, be sure to check out my Twitter and my Twitch. The links are going to be in the description. And that's where we're going to end it. My name is Gabriel Jones, and the sun may be setting, but I hope you were able to soak up those drops. Take care.